Hello everybody, my name is Troy. I've got a great testimony I'd like to share. It all started when I was 20 years old. I was reading the book of Revelation at a very specific place when God first spoke to me. He told me three words, basically that he's got some big plans for my life in the last days. Being young, I made my head swell up on a puffed up power trip. I learned real fast, if you don't got love, you don't got nothing. So the last 12, 13 years has been leading me, trying to teach me this love. Anyways, fast forward 12 years, it was March 23rd, 2010. I was in Tulsa County Jail, and I had a dream that all of us guys were sitting there at the tables talking real loud, and all of a sudden, all 99 of these other guys stood straight up on their feet, in silence now, and their jaws dropped and their eyes were wide as they was looking out that wall of windows in amazement, as if they saw something amazing out there. I didn't see nothing out there, so I stood and I asked the guy next to me, I said, hey, what do you guys see out those windows? He looks at me and he says, you don't see all those angels? So I squint my eyes and I look, but I wind up saying no. And I see this word no, N-O, jump off my tongue and fall straight down to the ground in front of me. I saw a spirit like a five foot flame of fire diving to me from behind, draws me down to my hands and my knees on the ground. Makes me to hover above the ground towards those windows like a magnet draw me to them. I got to those windows and my head bumped into them and I saw four huge angels all in white, about 40 feet tall, staring down at me with some serious looks on their faces. I awoke out of that dream and the spirit of God was all over me, all in me and all through me. From head to toe, made my hair stand up on end. Felt like I was levitating up off that bump. But as soon as I awoke, it felt like a ball came from my belly and it came up out of my mouth. It made me yell, yes, Lord, real loud when it came out of me. I said no in that dream, but he made me yell, yes, Lord. But anyways, out of the corner of my eye, I saw the backside of the glory of God. So he went through my cell wall. Just pure spirit. This goldish bronze shone all around him. The Bible calls it a veil of majesty all around him. Veil of Majesty is the color of amber or is a refiner's fire. But from the center out, I saw these large beams of goldish bronze light shine from the center out. The Bible talks about that in Habakkuk 3 3, talking about he had horns coming from his hand and there was the hiding of his power. But through that goldish bronze that shone all around him, I saw the pure white form of a man, just pure white brilliance. I saw the brightness of his face reflect back off that wall as he went through the wall. I didn't set, tell anybody what I had seen or heard that day, I kept it to myself. Later that night we had prayer call and there was a book laying there on the ground titled Prayer That Works by Jill Briscoe and the spirit led me to pick it up and start reading it. I started reading it that night when I couldn't fall asleep wondering what he was telling me through this and another dream right after it. But anyways on page 9 I found out what he was telling me. Jill Briscoe in this book You Need to Be a Persistent Prayer she started talking about how you need to be a persistent prayer if you are to see your prayers work. Elijah prayed continually about the work of God. He climbed a mountain and, and got to work. He set himself to watch and pray until the answer came. In 1 Kings 18, you know, he prayed seven times about the same thing. Lord, send rain. Don't stop praying. Most of us give up far too soon when we are praying. We hit an obstacle such as unanswered prayer and stop dead in our tracks. When Elijah set himself to watch and pray on the top of Mount Carmel, you get the impression that he settled down until the answer came. God likes us to be persistent. Jesus told a story about a woman who persistently asked a judge to grant her request in Luke 18. And Jesus commended the persistent blind beggar in Luke 18. I like Luke 18, 1. It said, And Jesus spoke a parable unto this end, that all men should not lose heart, that they should keep praying. He wants us to go on asking until it's the right time to get an answer. I think that prayer is a bit like jogging. Years ago, I took up running. Everyone in my family was into the sport in a big way, and I didn't want to be left out. They talked enthusiastically about going through the wall. When I saw these words going through the wall, I felt the Spirit of God come over me again, pointing to these words, telling me that's why he bumped my head into the wall, and then I could see in the dream, and when I awoke, why he walked through the wall. She went on to say, I wondered what they meant going through the wall. They explained that if you persisted when you felt you just had to give up, then you went through an invisible wall and got a second wind. It only happened to me once, but I do recall the sense of exultation and the sudden belief that I could run on forever. I think there is a wall as we engage in prayer as well. It's my belief that when many Christians practice prayer, they live on this side of the wall. They get to what I call the point of push and they stop instead of pressing on. Next time this happens to you, press on, be persistent, and you will find yourself in another country, a land of joy and freedom with new hope and expectations. Persistence takes your prayer life into a whole new orbit. Are any among you suffering, they should keep on praying about it, James tells us, James 5.13. This all happened to me on March 23rd, 2010 for another reason. Obamacare was signed into law on March 23rd, 2010. The same kind of power and authority that crashes right through our Constitution tells every man, woman, and child 
America that they have to buy a product, which is what insurance is. They have the same kind of power and control and authority to tell us all we have to buy a Toyota and that we have to take a mark on our right hand or our forehead. That's exactly what this power is all about. Abraham Lincoln said, when the people control the government, there is liberty. When the government controls the people, there is tyranny. That's all that's going on right now. Pray through the wall. Things are going to heat up. I pray that you will listen to the rest of this testimony because it gets pretty deep. And uh, it's, if you stick through to the end, you'll see some hope in it. God's got awesome plans for us.